Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host and one of your presenters today, uh -huh, um, Krista Porter, <coughs> excuse me, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar show where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today. And we post that on our website for you to watch at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our recordings. <clears throat> Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please to sh do share with your uh, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries here in Nebraska. So we will we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find um, topics on Encompass Live for all types of libraries academic, public, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, basically, our only criteria is something to do with libraries, uh, something uh, libraries are doing, something uh, resources and services we think may be useful to them. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of small services, um, all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes bring in guest speakers from across Nebraska and across the country, uh, but we also have our own Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations on things that we think may be of use to our libraries, and that's what we're doing this morning. Uh, joining me today is Holly Duggan, who is our CE coordinator, our continuing education coordinator here at the Library Commission. Good morning, Holly. Hi. And we are going to talk to you today together about, um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, our public librarian and library board certification programs. It's two separate programs, not all smushed together. <laughs> um, and how you can uh, improve your library service to your Nebraska communities by participating in um, both of these programs. Um, the, I wish I knew how long ago these were started. That would have been something I could have looked up. But I'm not really even sure, but um, for as long as both Holly and I have been here at the commission, I've been here for 20 years, um, we have had uh, certification programs for library boards and a certification program for library staff. Um, both of these programs have similar basic similar setup with different goals. I think that's a good description mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Um, the idea is to uh, keep up for both um, for both library staff, um, this is not just library directors, but um, any staff members can participate in the librarian certification program. Um, libraries, you know, from when you start your library um, studies um, and become a librarian or become a library staff person and um, years later you're still doing it, things can change over time and you need to learn and keep up on what's going on in the field. Um, continuing education, lifelong learning, big buzzwords in this field, in, in this area of course, and that's what these programs are both for. They are for you as your library staff and your library board members to keep up with um, just knowing how to do your jobs. Um, this will definitely improve your library service to your community as you're keeping up with new trends, new things going on, just reminding yourself of how things um, could be done, should be done. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just well, and also, even if you're not a librarian yet, if you're looking for a job or interested, the program's open to anyone in Nebraska. That's true. That's right. Yeah, I keep talking about staff using it. But yeah, if you if you do check on what we, we say, it's any Nebraska residents currently employed or planning to be employed. So even if you're just wondering what it's like, yeah, um, these are programs that you can um, participate in and take training um, that we offer through them. Uh, it's all free. That's a key point too that I think is very important to some people. <laughs> None of this costs you anything. There's no fee to like um, like a membership fee or a fee to sign up to join the program or to attend any of the courses or classes that we offer. Um, everything is covered by the Library Commission. Um, so it's just um, free training, free education for you to keep up to speed on what you um, need to do as a library staff member or as a uh, library board member. Mm -hmm. 
Um, both of these programs also, and I'm only going to mention this briefly here, or mainly today we're talking about is, a, is the two certification programs, but both the board, <clears throat> library board certification and the public librarian certification also feed into our public library accreditation program. Uh, libraries can also become accredited and help by being accredited um, and meeting certain criteria with it, of what you do at your library. You can receive extra funding from the Library Commission. You can be eligible for grants that you can apply to, um, apply for both from us and from other places. Um, and it just shows you know, to your community that you have reached this level of service um, that is, you know, can be very impressive to them. Um, your board needs to be certified in order for your library to be accredited, and your library director needs to be certified in order for your board, for your library to be accredited. Um, other library staff can also be certified, and it does add into your accreditation, but it's not a requirement, just the director is the one required one. Um, so we're not going to talk about accreditation today, that's a whole whole other big topic of its own. Today we're going to talk about the certification programs. Mm -hmm. um, and we have an, here, and if you want to pop it out there in our uh, flyout menu there, Holly, we, um, you see there we've got the board certification, the librarian certification, and library accreditation sections all together there in one pop out flyout menu. They call it mm -hmm. with all the information you need to know about all of them. Um, and today we're going to go into the two certification programs, and then other time you'll hear about accreditation. Don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> so I think Holly, I'll um, hand it over to you to um, start off with our uh, since right there at the top, the boards and how they okay. um, their whole process. We'll start with the library boards. So the library board certification, I'm actually, we'll do this a little out of order, but to start with, we have this library board status review page. And this is where you can, um, where you can go to see if your library is currently certified, the date um, of the expiration. Um, certification for boards is every three years, you need to earn 20 hours of continuing education activities and we'll go into what counts as an activity in a little bit um but that's as a group so not each member earns 20 hours as a board five members you have to earn 20 hours um which is a lot less intimidating i mean do the math yeah, there yes yeah. you can easily hopefully add less than five um, hours per person if you've got a five member board <laughs> yeah so you, if you can just add in you know a quick half hour to some regular board meetings when you're all together, it adds up really quickly. And that's true too. If you're all sitting together and watch like a half hour video, that's not a half hour of CE, that's a half hour times each person. So yeah, yeah. you so got four board two members, that's two CE you've made up yeah. all in one half hour time period. Yep. Um, and we'll go over what counts as CE and how to submit that, um, but it does add up really quickly. So we're, we're not trying to burden or we don't want this program to be like busy work um it's supposed to be encouraging and helpful but um it's just the 20 hours every three years so on this status page you can click your library to see even more details um if you want to see what activities have been reported um how many hours so this library ainsworth um they've met the current CEs, zero CEs needed um, and you can see your date and you can see the current board members that we have listed. Um, if any of this looks wrong or maybe you need to update board members, you can just let us know right here um, and we can get that fixed for you. And I like too that it also tells you when you're up due up next too. So yes. this 20 credits at CE is good to keep them certified through September of this year. Yep, so then and September 20th, 30th. Yeah have to start over again starting with your next yep oh, there's the sirens yeah uh, it's wednesday tornado siren testing we're fine <laughs> yep um so that's that status page and that's just a that's a good place to start if um just to check where your board is at currently um and then so we go back to this home page this fly out menu and I just, I want to quick point out this library board manual because it's important. Um, if you haven't looked at it, it's a really great resource for um, especially new board members or just sort of refresh yourself. Um, if you go down to this first chapter under basics and you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see um, 
these board responsibilities. So these, I love that document. That's like one of my go-tos. <laughs> yeah. It's super helpful. And we have, um, you can click here to make um, a printable PDF that you can just have for quick reference. Um, and these responsibilities, you should be familiar with. And this is um, when we start talking about what is eligible for a CE credit, we want the activities to be relevant to these responsibilities as a board member. So this is why some activities like um, classroom management or a webinar about retirement or Google, those aren't eligible because they're not directly related to your responsibilities as a board member and improving your library service, if that makes sense. Um, they're, they're good things to know, and that's great that you're doing some of those things, but they don't have to do with the how you your job and what you need to do to yeah. be a board member. And, you know, because we do get some like, well, they're related. There's some things the library yeah. does. That's fine. But that's the library staff's job. Your job is yeah. these things. So you need to focus on for earning your CE, for your certification, focus on those responsibilities. Yes. Um, okay, so going back to the home page and this flyout menu again, looking at the actual about the board certification page, um, you can see again, the program is designed to increase the board involvement and improve the effectiveness and the library service to your community. Um, and that's really our goal with this program. Um, scrolling down, you can see the different CE activities that you can do, you know, webinars, workshops, lectures, um, library conferences. We have um, minimum of 20 minutes is a, is a half a CE credit. And then, you know, it goes from there. Um, and we have a lot of resources on this page for trustees. Um, this trustee, oops, this trustee academy, um, this is part of United for Libraries, which Nebraska has a statewide membership, so it's free for you to use. Um, it is a series of courses, and they also have all sorts of other webinars and um, like online conferences sometimes that are really relevant to board members. Um, and if you have, okay. So we used to have a single username and password for this resource. It changed all this, yeah. Yes, it changed, um, I think, about a year ago. So if you haven't logged in in a while, um, it's a little different. You can just go to find your state, scroll down to Nebraska, and you can either register for an account or if you forgot your password. Um, it only takes you know a minute or two to do, but if you need help, doing this, um, just let me know and I can help walk you through it or. Um, so now instead of just one statewide thing that everybody uses, each person has their own personal account. Yeah. To use it. Awesome. Yes. So that's much easier to track everything, I assume, then too. Like keep it track is. of what you use, what you've done and what you've watched and. Yeah, and they'll send out certificates after you watch programs. Um, so it is, it's a lot nicer. It's just that, um, we just don't have that old username and password anymore. Um, so then the Trustee Academy is a series of courses that they put together um, covering competencies, working with your library director, an overview about um, library budget and funding, intellectual freedom, advocacy, um, really good courses. And they're, they're not too long. I think um, the longest one is maybe a half hour. They updated them, um, the videos, about two years ago, I think. And then um, we have the short takes for trustees. These videos, they're only about 10 minutes long. They are intended um, to be included for your regular board meeting. 10-minute um, video, we ask about 15 minutes of discussion. And that's a super easy way to um, earn CE hours. Mm -hmm. Just short video, short discussion, you're done. Um, and then we also have a few other short videos, um, some previous Encompass Live videos, and some other training down below. Um, and then we have the FAQ that we talked about the status. 
uh, what counts for a CE activity. Um, and again, relic, ugh, related to those duties as a library board member sponsored by um, a reputable agency. Um, and it can be in person or remote um, and it could be recorded. So we're not trying to limit the number of activities as long as it improves library service and it's related to those responsibilities. Um, Helps you do your job as a board member. Yeah, try and think of things that can make you better, be a better board member, be a better yeah, advocate for your library. Yeah. yeah. And if there's something that you're not sure if it counts, you can always contact me ahead of time and I'm happy to look at it and let you know. Or um, for library directors or presidents, if there's an activity that you're trying to plan for your board and you want to earn CE credit for it, um, I'm happy to work with you to make sure we meet those requirements and I can let you know how much CE um, it'll be worth. Um, some boards have done presentations with some of the system directors, which have been really, um, which all of the system directors are great resources. And that's mm -hmm. another way to fit in a meeting um, and learn more about resources available. And just so different like if you have one of the system directors come to your board meeting and talk about what they can do for you or what yeah. things they should be doing as a board, those kind of um, training type. Yep. You know, and one talk one. About, yeah. So personal things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little more tailored to your specific board. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we can definitely work that way too. Um, and then at the bottom, we just have, you know, some guidelines for what's not eligible so um you know so show social events book club meetings um general work related things that we've sort of mentioned um so does anyone have any questions about just that portion of it and then we'll go back up and i'll show you how to submit ours if anybody has any questions, go ahead and type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Anything you want to know about, anything you're confused about, any particular um, maybe activities you're wondering about for your library, go ahead and type it in there. Yeah. Um, now, and do we they do have, have to start yeah. off ahead of time before they submit hours, um, like joining the program, like telling us they're going to be doing this, or is that just like an automatic? Because there's a submit ICE activity, but then there's a to apply for certification or update board members below that. That's what I'm wondering about the difference. Oh, so, um, so that's, okay. So check the status of your board. If your board is not, doesn't have certification at all for some reason and you want to start that process, then you would apply first. If you're already, if your board's already in the program, even if you're lapsed, um, you can go ahead and do the activities and report them to us. Um, mm -hmm. And if you need to update a board member, that's okay. We can do that at any time. Yes. This whole process, none of it is automatic. It's all um, our department, Linda Babcock, and I go through um, the submissions. So if we have a question about who's doing what or if we need to update board members, we can do that. Um, mm -hmm manually um, so when you submit an activity it's not automatically on your record so if we have any questions we can um, reach out and fix whatever we need to fix first okay, so you have to so let us know ahead of time these are our board members so that we know when they do something there's something that it's connected to a library that it's <laughs> for yeah so looking at the um, board certification status page if you've got any sort of expiration date, if there's a date in that column, at, even if it's in red because it's a, it's a lapse, you're already in the program. But if yeah. it's blank, that means you've never actually done that uh, sign up with us to be get your board certified. Yeah. Correct. Okay, cool. Um, but I can, okay. So if you do need to start certification, it's just a quick application, just your library name, board president, email, and then we can reach out um, for more information if we need to get you started. Um, and if you are one of the libraries that are lapsed, um, 
again, that's okay. We can work with you. Just uh, reach out to me or Linda Backpack, and we can work with you um, on a plan to get you back certified. And then, so if you need to submit your hours, so after you've done a CE activity, you'll come to this report form, and it's just name, library name, your name, email, what activity was done, date, who participated, so if there's more than one person, so like in a meeting, the names of who participated, and then the number of hours. And then you'll just scroll, hit submit. Um, and again, if you have any questions about filling out this form, especially with the number of hours, sometimes it gets a little confusing. Um, just let us know, Linda and I are happy to help you figure it out. And you'll get a copy. So once you um, submit this, you'll get a copy and we'll get a copy. I think that's the basics of um, library board certification, unless anyone has a question. It doesn't look like anybody typed anything in after I reminded them, but um, if at any time you think of anything, go ahead and uh, type it in there. We can jump back to board certification, no problem. <laughs> Okay, so then librarian certification is again this flyout menu. And then we'll start right at the top for this one. Um, so librarian certification, these are again free program open to anyone in Nebraska or employed in a Nebraska library. Um, the goal is to improve library service throughout the state, sort of as a motivation to keep developing your skills and knowledge. Um, and provide some guidelines and it recognizes all of the librarians who are working hard to update and you know go above and beyond doing their job um, and learning and keeping up to date with all the new information and trends and everything um, so first if you're not yet in the program you will submit an application which is right here um, we just need your name, email, um, address. If you're not working in a library, that's fine. You can just click none. Um, and current position again. If you're not in a library, you can just none. Um, the certification levels. So this, so the levels are based on um, your education level. So whether or not you have um, the degrees and then these L's is whether or not you have a certificate or a higher degree in library science specifically. So if you only if you have um, a bachelor's degree plus the certificate in library science you, you'd be the 3L versus maybe you have a bachelor's degree in psychology but you don't have that library science extra piece it would be a level three and um and again if you have any questions at all about what level you are or you know how many hours you have let me know and i can help you um the idea behind this is if you have a library science background great if you don't that's totally fine um you'll just need to take a set of the basic skills courses which i'll show you in a little bit um but the basic that's, skills course that's something very important here in, in nebraska and in possibly other states across the country when we have so many rural areas and libraries in rural areas and the people there just having a library degree just isn't going to be a thing but they are great people running the library and they have great um knowledge and skills and um of life experiences but you know there's knowledge about how to run the library, but for the certification here that we have, we have these extra classes to get you some of that library school type education without having to go to library school. Yeah, and exactly. If you're just running a library like 10, 15 hours a week, you probably don't need to get your master's degree in or anything in library science, no. But you do need to know some of the basics of, well, what am I doing here? And that's why we've got this great um, uh, basic skills program that will teach you that. Yep, they're just, they're also online courses. Free. Free education. <laughs> yeah, online, they're free. 
Um, it's just this, and we'll talk about it, but it's just a series of introductory level library science courses. And that's all the, the differences between the L and not L. Um, and so that we have that here. If you have the library science, um, yes. If you don't have it, you'll just need um, the basic skills classes. So whether or not you have the library science degree, um, your certifications are good for three years and you will need to earn a total of 45 hours in those three years. And if you're taking the basic skills classes, those hours count toward your total. So we're not asking you to do 45 hours plus the classes, if that makes sense. Um, those classes are a part of your total. Um, so then the three years, and then much like the board certification, earning hours, um, the CE activities are planned learning experiences designed to bring about specific knowledge or skills related to library science and library services. Um, so this might be a little more general than the library boards since the boards have to be their specific responsibilities, but we do have some guidelines which we'll go through. Um, so let's see, did that and then, okay, let's talk about the basic skills real quick. Um, so the basic skills classes, we have six required courses that, um, that are offered throughout the year. Um, collection management, community, communication, customer service, intellectual freedom, and introduction to cataloging. Um, again, these classes are all online and they're free and they last about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, these different electives throughout the year that you can choose seven of. And again, you don't need to complete these, you know, in your first year, you have three years to do this. Um, and then this, we have the schedule of the basic skills classes here. Um, does anybody have questions about the application or the basic skills part of the certification? Um, yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and let us know about the programs or the courses. Um, and the classes are taught here, some of the courses here too are taught by us me holly mm -hmm. um, and some of our other um commission staff and some of our uh, system directors mm -hmm. um and the, they're offered once a year throughout the year you can kind of see the schedule yeah um and generally it's the same schedule every year so don't think okay what's it going to be in 2022 usually yeah. they're all in the same order <laughs> um yeah. and it's about the same time every year um, last year, of course, things did get moved around a bit due to COVID. Um, yeah. But I think for the most part, we're back on schedule. Yes. Yep. Um, and as you see, um, Holly did say they're usually about two weeks, each class is two weeks long, except for those self-paced ones, um, mm -hmm. because they are something you do on your own without a lot of uh, guidance, direct or yeah. instructor <laughs> involvement, yeah. um, the communication one and the intro to cataloging, as you can see, those are month long ones, but you get a whole month to do everything in, in there. On yeah. Your own. Okay. Then if we come back to this menu and we come down to, um, let's do how to earn C. So much like the board page, we have our guidelines up top what counts as CE and, or I guess what kind of activities. So again, you have the webinars, conferences, um, same kind of timeline, has to be at least 20 minutes. Um, and it goes from there. Um, you can, if you do have some library science classes that you've taken within your certification period, you can request or you can report those for CE credit um, up to 20 hours. That's usually about two classes. You'll just need to contact me or Linda and we can get those added to your record. They just have to be library science classes. Um, online courses, 
we'll talk about in a second. And then um, some of these different activities like teaching leadership activities are all gonna be, um, they're eligible for CE, but you'll just need to contact us for how many. Um, and I'll show you the CE report form in a second. Um, what counts, it needs to be organized for the purpose of teaching or learning about library science, sponsored by a reputable organization and at least 20 minutes long. And again, if you're not sure if something counts, you can contact us ahead of time and I can let you know. Um, so how do I check my CE hours? If you go to this CE record review, um, first name, last name, password, or password lookup if you need it, you can submit it and then um, you can see how many hours you have um, and for which activities. So the board, the board certification obviously is public, anyone can see it, but your own record obviously is personal and we don't share that information um, you know, between staff members or anyone else at your library. Um, and it has that automatic password lookup in there too, right? For if you don't yeah, know, that'll just yeah. automatically generate something for them? Yeah, so if you click on it, um, it'll just ask for your, your name and your city, submit, um, and then it'll send it to your email that we have on record. I know we or get that you, a lot. I don't know what my, how do I know what my password is to get into that, yeah. Yeah, so that you can just do that and it'll send it to you. Or you can just, um, again, contact me or Linda and we can send that to you as well. Um, okay, so then back to this page. Um, college academic courses do count as long as they're within your three-year period. Um, online non-academic courses, so things like library juice um, or Code Academy classes that you take online, these are a little different. A lot of them do count, um, but the way different organizations determine continuing education hours or units are all different. Mm -hmm. um, and the way each student takes online classes are different. So what? So if I take a class, it might take me five hours. If Krista takes a class, the same class, you might go through it in two hours. So there's no there's no standard time. So right. the way we do it is for online courses, it's one CE per week module or topic that the course covers. So a four week online class is for CE credits. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> okay. yeah, you're right. You can't tell how long it's going to take somebody. It's so similar to our basic skills courses. They're mm -hmm. They last yeah. a certain amount of time, so you earn a certain amount of credit for taking them. Yeah, um, and yeah. some organizations. Like, we have had people go through like a basic skills class in like the first three days. Yeah. And complete all just, the assignments and okay. Yeah. <laughs> but other people and take it, it and goes. yeah. Depends on how fast you read, how much time you have to dedicate to it. So it's just, there's no way to tell time-wise how, how much. Um, that's why what we do is one CE per module. Unless, so the only exception is um, courses that are provided by ALA, the American Library Association, or one of its affiliates right here, this link. Mm -hmm. um, courses that are offered by these association affiliates, um, they will usually tell you this course is um, you know, 10 hours, then we'll go with that just because it's from ALA. And it's, um, you'll usually have it on your certificate after you complete the, um, the course. And for those courses, um, you need to complete the whole course. So you can't do just like one or two modules and get credit for that. The whole class needs to be completed. And again, ask us if you have any questions at all. Um, if you are an instructor for a training course or a presentation, you can earn credit hours for that. 
Um, you can get credit for participating in professional associations as a leader. So as like a president or section chair. Um, attending the usual meetings don't count, but we want to recognize that leadership position that you've um, that you've held that you've done. So just contact us about those. Um, same thing with about getting published. Um, reading an article or a book. So those have a little different requirements. Um, you'll contact me or Linda with what you read, a brief summary. Um, and then you can see here it has to be nonfiction, library science within the last five years. And then again, we have just a short list of some of the sample things that don't or that aren't eligible for CE credit. Um, general job related activities, um, travel and things like that. So any questions there? Okay. Okay, so I'm going back to our fly out menu. When you need to submit credits, you can click here. You'll fill this out. Um, event format. So did you watch the recording or watch the webinar live or was it recorded? Um, something you attended in person, a conference, or other, and we might contact you. So which um, one of those would be for if I was the actual presenter, I was doing the teaching? Like, so as for like example, whatever, for this, whatever your format was of it, or is that an other? Yeah. So for example, if you wanted to submit this in Compass Live that you are doing, you would do the live webinar, and then um, okay. obviously presenter, speaker, you. And then that way you could earn double you put in just as it. Oh, okay. Yep. Or um, conference and workshop. Same thing. Um, and again, you can always email too if you um, if you have questions or um, you just want to make sure we know that's perfectly okay. Um, but with this conference, if you attend the conference workshops, um, there's only two sessions listed, but as you type, um, more uh, it'll open. Add more if you finish. If you fill up the previous yeah. one, cool. So keep adding as many as you've done all at once. Yeah, so you don't have to um, list two sessions at a time. You it'll keep going. Um, Something also. Oh, I'll let you finish up on this. <laughs> oh no, I'm just gonna say if um, if you need like the start date and end date is right there. Um, and then you'll just submit it. You'll get a copy and then we'll get a copy. And again, we'll manually add this to your record. So it won't show up immediately. I always have to give a, Linda at least a week or so yeah. to get everything done. Um, I was gonna mention for some conferences like um, Nebraska ones, mm -hmm. um, specifically the Nebraska Library Association Conference and mm -hmm. our Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference, I know those do. We also create special CE reporting forms for them for our library people here. So you may sometimes get notifications from us saying, okay, for this particular big event, don't use your regular CE form. I mean, you can if you want to, but we yeah. pre-made this one where it actually just lists, here's all the sessions. Um, well, for the big talk ones in one day, here's each session, just check the box in front of the ones you did and send it to us that way to make it easier for you. Yeah. But there's usually a red box reminding you, so. If Same you forget it's over there right now, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think that is the basics of librarian certification, unless anyone has questions. Um, did you go through the application form for this one too? For first getting um, yeah, just the name, email, some addresses, and then your level that you'll just pick. Right. Um, yeah. And again, if you click the wrong level by accident, just that's fine. We can update it. Um, so I think that that's because that's a question. We're trying to think of the kind of questions that I get sometimes, and it is, sometimes it is, I submitted CE, but I don't see anything happening. It's like, well, you actually have to do this first, both for the board and the and the librarian. Tell us you want to participate in the certification mm -hmm. program, and then when you submit CE, we know that that's something you're interested in. It's not just submit a CE. Um, 
report, you know, request, and mm -hmm. we automatically do that for you. You have to do this first step, and I think sometimes some people forget about that or miss that for first little bit. Yeah, and so let's say you're going to a conference or one of the workshops, um, and you haven't applied for certification yet. That's okay. Um, hmm. you can okay. Out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can fill out the certification and still get um, credit for the conference or workshop um, because we'll see the dates. So you can fill out the certification and attend a workshop the same day. That's okay. There's not, you don't need to wait for approval mm -hmm. from us before you start attending um, different activities or watching webinars. Um, it's just that, again, we manually do this. So it might just take a few days for us to get it all entered. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to mention, oh, I don't know if anything else you're going to talk about with the librarian certification? I think went through the whole thing. Um, I think that's the basics. I was just going to show under this education and training link. Um, we also have the basic skills classes information here. Um, we have different training opportunities with on our calendar. You can go and see, you know, what's coming up, um, different workshops. You can see um, the basic skills classes are listed with information about registration dates and how many CE hours. So if there's anything on this calendar, um, you know, like different meetings, you can see if it's how many CE hours are eligible. Um, let's see, and then we have um, some different links for CE opportunities. So we have this list of some free online learning courses that you can look into. Um, so we have many options out there now. Um, yeah. I mean, we've always had a lot of these available out there. We know, um, I mean, we do this show every week, been doing it for over 10 years, um, but lots of other organizations have been doing online sessions that there's just so many things, but there's, I think after this past year, there's even more. Many oh, things yeah. that were in online or in person only have become online either in instead of or in addition to, um, or just some places they're saying, hey, let's jump into that on, online field um, for the yep. first time. Um, and then we also have, we have, and here's the Encompass Live. You can watch any of the recordings too mm -hmm. and submit those for CE hours. Um, let's see. We have the list of free webinars um, that I'll be updating. We have the Web Junction is another really great yeah. for both librarians and boards. It's free to use. They have lots of different free training. Oops. Oops. Yeah, free please. training. Um, a lot of upcoming webinars. Um, they have a course catalog of all sorts of different topics um, that you can go through, watch webinars, go through their courses, and everything through Web Junction is eligible for. See, there's a section there too, friends, trustees, and volunteers. So this yep. could be for your board members as well, not just your staff. There'd be things in yep. here for both. Um, they have a lot of really great courses. Um, if, so even if you just want to spend some time clicking around to see just what they have. Um, oops, if you go back to Web Junction. Yeah, they just, and then they have like the upcoming ones. So they have a mental health first aid and um, a community places one this month. Um, and you may see sometimes in there, some of our Encompass live shows, they mm -hmm. do. Um, contact me periodically to say, hey, we'd like to actually link to some of your topics because they fit into some of your shows because they fit into some of our topics that we are putting together here. So you'll yeah. see a lot of crossover <laughs> sometimes where it looks like Web Junction is offering an Encompass Live thing. It's just they're linking to our recording because um, it fits into some program they're doing. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that they link to lots of other organizations too. You'll see it's not all originally created by them necessarily. Some are, and some are working with other partner organizations. Yes. Um, and then there's also this monthly list that um, I mentioned. Um, and it has 
just the list of everything. I think um, Wyoming is, is the one that puts this together every month. The State Library of Wyoming is really good at organizing yeah. this for everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. They have the different um, topics and just a whole list of here's some specifically for boards. Um, so you can go through and sort of look at your schedule for the month. And for a lot of these webinars, if you can't watch it live, just go ahead and register. And um, a lot of them will send out the recording that you can watch later and still get a CE credit for it. Um, yeah, they have everything, school libraries, technology, training, volunteers, and then below they have um, more details about what each <clears throat> webinar is about. Okay, so I think that is everything that's, I want. That's like there's so much out there, it can be kind of overwhelming, I think. I mean, we have, we have a lot of librarians or library boards that contact us saying, oh my gosh, we need to get our hours, I don't know what to do. And then I look at this and I'm like, now I'm the other way, I don't know which one to do. There's so many which <laughs> to pick from. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> that's one thing, if if there is a topic or if you're if you're feeling overwhelmed on like, what should I start with? What should I do? Um, you're more than welcome to email me and I can send you just a shorter list of maybe some things to start with. Or... Get, get your foot in the, toe in the water kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So you can kind of get started at least. Cool. And I definitely, on the board side, those um, short takes and those trusty things are really good basic, um, especially when you have, as we do on, you know, board members do switch um, often, um, getting new board members up to speed on what, what did I get myself into? <laughs> what the heck yeah. am I supposed to be doing here? I mean, we have a board manual, which is great for that as well. We were highly recommend the board manual and um, the uh, director's guidebook. They have the, all the, the, in, you know, in depth about how you do your job, but sometimes watching a short little, depending how you learn, your learning style and you know, what best works for you. I can watch a 10 minute video on one of these short takes things and it, it got me to figure out what am I supposed to be doing as this new board member that I, at this library yeah. decided. Good to, especially um, with new members and getting on the same page as a whole board with your director. So everyone sort of has those same expectations and sort of all know what they're doing the the trustee and board sessions probably a good idea that a library director watch them as well if you can so then you can yeah. still understand too what a board your board is supposed to be doing and you guys yeah. all know you've all watched this same session not just the board but the director too so they know okay this is what you guys know and now i know it too and now we can all work together um smoothly yeah definitely um but yeah this united for libraries they have all sorts of different videos and webinars more than just the trustee academy or the short takes um they have different events mm -hmm. you know like they're doing a national library conversation with dan rather tomorrow um, Run yeah, it. Tomorrow night. um so it's another good one for the boards and director to just sort of click through and even just see what all is here for you Does anybody have any questions? Uh, please do type into your question section. Any more questions about the um, the board certification, the librarian certification for staff and directors, um, what you can and can't um, attend or apply for? I think we've gone through everything very, very cleanly and in depth and covered everything there is about each one. Um, it can get a little confusing, I think sometimes, but uh, that's why we have all this information on there for you. Um, certifications leading into accreditation. Um, Holly and Linda, definitely great resources for any questions um, if you do have any as you're trying to get all your records. And something else too, you talked about working with them on getting um, if they've lapsed, getting back. Uh, also, if it's getting close to when you're due to um, be re renewing any of your kind of certifications and you're struggling. Um, yeah. 
whatever reasons. This last year, we had the COVID-19 pandemic. The year before, here in Nebraska, in the Midwest, we had flooding. <laughs> There's yeah. been something every year. Uh, and they are willing to work with you on um, both certifications, the board and the staff, on if you need extensions, if some, you know, if there's special circumstances, extenuating circumstances, just call or email and say, hey, here's the situation, here's what's our problem is, what can we do? And Lynn is really good at putting together a plan for yeah. if if you do this many hours by this date, you'll be fine and we'll extend you. Um, we did that proactively for some libraries over this past year. Too. We just reached out and said, "Hey, be, you know, we're going to we're going to see if you need any extra extension on this, because we know your library might be closed down. Your staff or your boards are not able to do what they need to from this past year, and that's fine. Um, we will do that." And the same thing with the accreditation, which both of these certifications lead into. Accreditation is what I'm in charge of. So when your public library's, like your library's own accreditation comes up, same thing. If you are struggling, keep in touch with us. Just let us know what's going on at any time and um, we can work with you. With the accreditations, we actually extended everybody for um, now two years just because of with the COVID-19 pandemic, there is just, there's just no way for everybody, including me, <laughs> to get everything in addition to reacting to the pandemic. Also, you have this other thing that's fine um, but let it just let us know and we can work with you this is a program um, but all of these programs the certification programs and the accreditation programs are all things run by us here at the Nebraska Library Commission there is these are not um, if you're not from Nebraska or if you're talking to colleagues elsewhere this is not a national program type thing it's not run by ALA or IMLS or anything each state on their own it does this if they want to um, there are other states that don't have certification or don't have accreditation. So um, this is just done by us here at the Library Commission, uh, me, Holly, and uh, Linda. And so we can work with you and um, to make sure, as, as you said earlier, Holly, that you're successful in yeah. um, your learning, in your education, and in providing services you know, to your community um, when you, um, after you go through all these programs. Definitely. All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. Okay. So I think we can, we're almost at the top of the hour, 11 again here. Um, we started a little late, but that's okay. Yeah. Any technical issues this morning, but we, we figured it out. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. And if well, there are questions later, just let me know. Um, oh, yeah. Email me, call me, and we can work, figure it out. Yep, reach out to us, and, and we'll answer your questions then. Um, any last words before we I do my wrap up here? No, I think that's everything. Let me get over here. I'm trying to make sure I am. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right, just clicking on things behind the scenes here. All right. <laughs> All right, so um, as you said, if you have any other questions, let us know. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen now so that I can uh, wrap up today's show. There we go. All right. Um, so thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you, Holly, for being here with me this morning to talk about our certification programs. Um, I think we're really proud of them. Um, they really do help keep our libraries on track and um, up to speed on what they need to know to do their jobs. And uh, they work. Um, can be conf a lot sometimes for a new director coming in, I think, and a new board members. I, I get that feeling sometimes. Um, but we're here to work with you on it and make sure that you, um, as I think you said earlier, we're not making this, we don't want this to be a burden on anyone. No. It's something that's supposed to help you. So just let us know if there's something happening or if you're struggling. And, mm -hmm. and there's always extensions and discussions that can be had with you about it. So don't worry too much about it. Definitely. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. That will be it for today's show. Um, this is our Encompass Live page here. Our, our archives, as Holly had showed you earlier, are right here underneath our upcoming shows. Um, today's show will be at the top of the list here. It's always the most recent one at the top. And it will have a um, link to the recording, which we post to our YouTube channel. 
And then um, there are links to all of our certification pages that are in the show description, so you'll be able to get to those as well. Um, while I'm here, I'll show you, this is where you can search our full archives if you wanna look up any specific topics. Like as Holly was mentioning, you can watch any of these to earn CE credit for your um, uh, librarian certification or your library board certification. <laughs> Um, just put a topic in here and you'll come up with it. You can see I've got the most, you can search um, the whole show archives or just most recent 12 months. That is because this is the full archives for Encompass Live. We have been um, doing the show since January 2009, so we have over 10 years worth of recordings here. That's a lot. <laughs> um, some of the shows do stand the test of time and you'll be able to watch them whenever and get good information in, on them but some things may become outdated on here and expired uh, links might not work anymore programs might be completely different different some services might not exist anymore or have, or have changed drastically so just pay attention to the original broadcast date if you are searching the full archives so you can at least know when this particular show um, was broadcast so you can say okay this is actually from three years ago so maybe it's not the best one about about digital literacy. I don't know. It might be great. <laughs> um, so just pay attention to the date when you are watching these. Um, but there is no, you know, you can watch something. I don't think you have any rules about how old something is for certification, do we, Holly? <laughs> um, just for books or classes, mm -hmm. but not for webinars, no. Yeah. So you can watch something as old as you want to on here. And as long as it's the right topic, um, it's good to go. Um, we have back to my page. We do also have a Facebook page. I've got a link here to our Encompass Live Facebook page, and here it is over here. We post reminders about the shows that are um, coming up, um, when our recordings are available. Where's one from last week? There we go. Um, so you can just keep an eye on us over here if you do like to use Facebook. Otherwise, elsewhere on social media, I know Twitter, Instagram, not sure where else. We use the NCUMP Live, a little abbreviation there for Encompass Live. So look for that hashtag and you'll see things that our social media people are posting about the show. Um, so that wraps up for today's show. I hope you join us next week. We're going to be talking about strategic planning. Um, easier than it looks. It is. Yeah. Um, a simple approach to strategic planning. Uh, Patrick Bodley, who is the um, in director at Independence Public Library in Oregon, is going to be with us to talk about, give you some tips and tricks on how to do great strategic planning for your library. So please do sign up for that one. You see all of our other dates coming up here um, in April and into May. So always keep an eye on our schedule to see when new things will be added to the calendar. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here with this morning, with us this morning. I'm just double checking everything behind the scenes here. Okay. <laughs> and um, we hope to see you on a uh, at a future episode of Encompass Live. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>